Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudey, consultant in reproductive medicine and surgery at the Homerton University Hospital, London. And today I'm going to talk to you about a slightly different subject, something which seems to affect all of us practicing some amount of reproductive medicine. What should be the size of the follicle in a clomiphene cycle for a best success rate? And that's when you do intrauterine insemination. Now there was a paper presented in the ASRM which looked at size, optimal size of the follicle in natural and in clomiphene cycles, ovulation induction with intrauterine insemination. Are you always done to use during a natural cycle or following ovulation induction with clomiphene? HCG was administered, intrauterine insemination was performed, primary objective was to identify the optimal lead follicular size in natural as well as in clomiphene cycles. It is a retrospective cohort study. Now, often you would ask me why am I presenting a retrospective cohort study? It's because the studies of this sort are very few and often they may tell us about what we are not entirely certain about and though it is not a very robust study, it does give us an indication. There's another paper which I'm going to present in the next couple of weeks which looks at exactly the same question but on, on seeing whether let, with letrozole and clomiphene which follicular size is better. So if you look at the materials and methods, women less than 40 years, patent tubes, normal intrauterine cavity, sperm count more than 15 million per ml, natural or clomiphene cycles between 2004 and 2013, that's a wide range of almost nine years, those who had a spontaneous LH surge or those who had consecutive IUIs were excluded. In a natural cycle, 17 mm was taken to be the cutoff where triggering was done. In clomiphene cycles, 18 mm was a cutoff. And by now, there's some understanding that with clomiphene cycles, we know that we need to look at a follicle size between 18 and 19 from past evidence that has been coming up. And that's the reason why in this study, they looked at taking a cutoff of 19 mm of clomid. The endometrium was greater than or equal to 7 mm and the clinical pregnancy was plotted on a chart with follicular size. Odds ratio of clinical pregnancy at different follicle size were taken. And that makes it slightly interesting. Do we take a fixed 18 mm to trigger? And the study suggested that in a natural cycle, the highest pregnancy rate around 14% was when the follicle size was 19 mm. The reference value was 17. This was not statistically significant and thus we cannot draw an inference from there. While in clomiphene cycles, the highest pregnancy rate was when the lead follicle was 22 mm, 16%, an odds ratio of 2.14. Even when you stratify this for age, in the age of 35 to 40 years, the odds ratio was 1.9, certainly statistically significant. So what do we understand from this study? This starts giving us some idea that in clomiphene cycle, if you need to trigger ovulation, triggering a bit later may be better. Often I've wondered why is it so? Is it so because it gives the endometrium a better chance to recover and build up the lining? Is it because the blockage that takes place from the LH in the initial part or the negative feedback is restored? I don't know these answers and I don't think many of us knows why this, uh, uh, this takes place. But I think it will give us a slight indication of whether waiting a day or two more, waiting for an endometrium to increase waiting to get the follicle between 20 mm to 22 mm may improve the chances of pregnancy. 
I will try and review another paper which is slightly interesting again, which looks at whether this same logic appears applies to letrozole. In the meantime, I would be grateful if you could like this page and share it. It's extremely important that we try and share as much knowledge as we have because that's the only way we'll be able to expand this fantastic field. Thank you very much.